Hey guys, it's Mr. C, and we are going to be finishing with this lesson, Chapter 2. So this is um, Chapter 2, Lesson 5, which is Types of Solutions of Linear Equations. And I'm just going to forewarn you that this lesson can, at first glance or at first listen, um, seem a little confusing. So I'm going to really encourage you to take your time with this, pause as you need to, and for those of you who aren't already, definitely try to take some notes and try some of the examples um, it'll definitely help you as you're doing this, but um, all the equations that we've solved so far are known as linear equations, and everything we've solved so far has resulted in some variable, like x, equaling some number. Like, you solve your equation, you get x equals 3. Um, but sometimes when you solve an equation, it may result in some number equaling another number or some number equaling the same number. And when that happens, that's telling you something about the solutions or the answers to the equation. So your what I should learn today is to identify whether an equation with one variable has either one solution, many solutions, or no solutions. And I know that just sounds weird right now, but hopefully by the end of this, you can come back to that and it would make plenty of sense. Um, and to start us off, before we even try any examples, I'm just going to go through what it means to have a certain number of solutions. So to have one solution, what does that mean? It means that your equation is only going to be true for one number. That means when you've solved your equation, x is only going to equal one number, and that's the only number you can plug back into the original equation for it to work. And that's everything we've done so far. You've solved you've gotten x or y or whatever the variable is, you've plugged your answer back in to check, and that's the only number that would make it work. So when that happens, the number of solutions that are um, for that problem are one. There's one solution and one only. Sometimes there might be no solutions. You might work through an equation and find out there's no values for the variable, whether it's x or y or whatever, that would make the equation work. And we haven't looked any um, at any of those examples, we're going to look at those in a bit. And then finally, there might be some equations where there's infinitely many solutions, which means you could plug in any number in the world and it would make the equation work. And we haven't looked at any of those yet, but we're going to in a bit. And this will make sense. We'll come back and make sure that when we revisit this slide, each of those things were covered. So just to start us off, we are going to look at an equation, which I'm going to write down. So 2x minus 4 equals negative x minus 1. Now, we're going to use this equation, we're going to solve it, and we're going to then be able to do what the directions say. Tell whether this equation has one solution, infinitely many solutions, or no solutions. The way to answer that question is to actually solve the equation and see what your answer tells you. So let's just solve as you normally would. For this, I have variables on both sides of the equation, so I'm going to isolate them. I want to get them all on the same side. So I'm going to take this negative x. I'm going to add x to eliminate it here and bring it over here. So now I've got 3x minus 4 equals negative 1. And then I'm going to just solve as I would any other equation using inverse operations. Okay, And I'm going to solve and find out that x equals one and just to show my work I divided by three on both sides okay now this is an example of the equations that we've been solving we solve and we find that some variable equals some one number and for this the question says tell whether the equation has one solution infinitely many solutions or no solutions this equation has one solution okay only one there's only one number that you can plug into this original equation 2x minus 4 equals negative x minus 1 that will make the equation work and because of that that tells us this is a one solution type of equation so this should be the most easiest for you to identify you should be very comfortable with um, with identifying equations that have one solution because that's all we've been doing but there's also another kind of equation so let's take a look at another example Okay, x minus 2. So I'm going to solve this equation. 
and by solving it I'll be able to identify this as an equation that has one solution infinitely many or no solutions so first step can't really do anything here but I can distribute here and now I'm going to just solve as I normally would I'm going to take uh, this 2x Okay. Now, you're going to notice something kind of funky happen here. 2x minus 2x gets rid of it here, but I do the same thing here, and it's also gone over here. So what am I left with? Negative 4 equals negative 4. And we haven't seen anything like this before. But what this tells me, when I solve an equation, and my final things that are left are some number equaling the same exact number, that tells me that this equation has infinitely many solutions which means I could literally plug in any number in the world for X on both sides and this equation would work it doesn't matter what you plug in you could plug in 1 2 negative 5 a million um, 3.4 it doesn't matter you're going to get the same answer um, for both sides of the equation so this has infinitely many solutions. Um, and the way to tell this is when you solve, once you get to the end, if there's some number that equals the same number, infinitely many solutions. There's also a couple tricks or shortcuts to seeing this. Um, for instance, at this line that I'm circling right here, after I took this equation and simplified it a bit, I got 2x minus 4 equals 2x minus 4. Well, I end up having the same exact thing on both sides of the equation. That tells me right, up, right there that this is going to have infinitely many solutions. No matter what I put in for x, if I put in 5, 2 times 5 is 10, minus 4 is 6. 5, 2 times 5 is 10, minus 4 equals 6. doesn't matter what I plug in right here. It's always going to be the same on both sides. So this is an example of an equation that has infinitely many solutions. And if you're taking notes, how can you tell if something has infinitely many solutions if the final line of the equation or the final answer has some number equaling the same number, which in this example, negative 4 equals negative 4. Now there's one other type of equation, and we're going to use this example to help us look at it. So 2x minus 4 equals 2 times, and we'll use x plus 1. Now I'm going to simplify as much as I possibly can and to get to this line I just distributed um, and now I'm going to take this 2x and I'm gonna bring all my variables to one side so 2x minus 2x cancels out and the same thing happens here 2x minus 2x excuse me cancels out which leaves me with negative 4 equals 2 and there's nothing else I can do. I've come to the end, but this time I've come to the end of the equation, and I have some number equals a different number. Well, that doesn't work. There's no solution, and I'm going to write that out, for this equation. This is an example of an equation that has no solution. There is no number on this planet that you can plug in for x and plug in for x that would make these, this work no matter what you try. And if you wanted to, you could sit there and test it out. But instead of wasting your time doing that, the shortcut, the way that you can tell is, once you've simplified and solved this equation as much as you can, and I got it down to negative 4 equals 2, if you have one number equaling some other number, it doesn't matter what the numbers are, then that means that you have no solution. There's nothing that you can do to make this equation work. It has no solutions. Um, and that can happen sometimes. So these are your three types of equations. If you need to stop or pause or rewind to see them again, you have equations that can have one solution, which we've been doing, x equals some number, infinitely many solutions, some number equals the same exact number, or no solution, which when you solve and simplify, you have some number that equals some entirely different number and that's the three types of equations. Now I'm not going to do any more examples of these, but I am going to th uh, throw in two word problems before this video ends, just because word problems I know are our downfall and it's what we need to work on the most. 
and we should look at some examples of how word problems can have um, some solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions. So let's look at this. You want to take 10 lessons at a swim club. You can pay a membership fee of $20 plus a some fee per lesson. You could also decide not to pay a membership fee, but in that case, the fee per lesson is $3 more. Is there any lesson fee for which these two plans cost the same? Well, I'm going to go right to my keyword. The same means equal. So is there anything where the first plan is going to equal the second plan? Well, to, do, to answer that question, I need to solve and see what my solution tells me. So let's go with the first plan. The first plan says that you can pay a membership fee of $20. Okay, so there's my fee. Plus, I'm taking, it says you want to take 10 lessons. So some membership fee, which I'm going to call F, per um, lesson. So plus... 10 lessons times whatever the fee is. On the other hand, I could not pay a membership fee, so that eliminates the $20, but the fee per lesson is $3 more. So I'm still going to take 10 lessons times, but this time it's the fee, whatever that is, we're, we're finding that, plus $3. And where did I get that? It says the fee per lesson is three dollars more. So now that I've got my equation set up, I'm going to solve as much as I possibly can and see what that tells me about the um, about the solutions. And remember our question says, is there any lesson fee for which these two plans cost the same? So let's simplify as much as possible. First off, this side looks pretty good. 20 plus 10 F equals, now here I can distribute, 10 times f is 10f plus 30. Um, it looks like I'm going to bring all my variables to one side, so I have f's here and f's here, so 10f minus 10f cancels out. I'm going to do the same thing here, 10f minus 10f cancels out, and that leaves me with 20 equals 30. Well, in the back of your mind, especially after just doing an example of this, I've got some number equaling some other number. That tells me that there is no uh, solution. Okay. And how do I formulate an answer to this question? Is there any lesson fee for which these two plans cost the same? No, there's no lesson fee that would make these plans equal ever because we've just solved it down to there is no solution. There is no possible fee or value for f that's going to make this equal this. No matter what I do, you can try to plug in any number you want for f here. This will never equal this. So there's nothing that's going to make these plans cost the same. And it says justify your answer, which I'm going to put in all the problems that you do. Your justification really is the work um, in solving it. So if you don't like showing work or 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 showing um, how you've solved a problem, get in the habit because that's justifying your answer. That's as good as writing a paragraph about what you did. Your work can speak for itself sometimes. Um, but I think you can handle trying these summary questions. So um, pause the video, write them down in your notebook, give them a shot, and then we'll go over them um, together in class next time we meet. Um, the first question has four parts to it. There's four different equations, and I want to know if each one has one solution, infinitely many, or no solutions. And look, it says justify your answer. Do that by showing work, okay? And then you've got a word problem. If you're stuck on the word problem, maybe use another one I did in, in this video um, as a little bit of a help for you to guide yourself through it. If you have any troubles, just email me. Otherwise, I will see you when I see you. Um, thanks for watching.